Mr. Speaker, I beg to present for second reading the bill in short entitled Virtual Assets Bill. Mr. Speaker, the bill for consideration, the Virtual Assets Bill, seeks to provide for the regulation and supervision of a virtual asset business of the virtual asset business in the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union and will introduce a licensing regime to be overseen by the Financial Services Regulatory Authority in St. Lucia, the FSRA, Mr. Speaker. The new, this bill, Mr. Speaker, seeks to strengthen the regulatory framework in the advancement of virtual asset business. Virtual asset business includes the transfer of a virtual asset, whether or not for value, and covers the instances where the virtual assets are accepted as a form of payment for product or service from a vendor. As such, a virtual asset is defined as a digital representation of value that can be traded or transferred digitally and can be used for making payments to investments. However, these do not include the digital representations of the fiat currency, such as the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECDB's Dcash. A difference, Mr. Speaker, between the fiat currency of the ECCU, which is called Dcash, and the virtual asset. A virtual asset is a broader and more expansive notion, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in recent years, there's been an increase and, and, and evolving of innovative measures used for the swift transfer of virtual assets. The most common example of these virtual assets being virtual currency, such as Bitcoin. We have also seen gaming tokens, such as non-fungible tokens, NFTs, and governance tokens, also considered as virtual assets, depending on the circumstances and context in which the assets exist and are used, Mr. Speaker. With the introduction of blockchain technology as a virtual asset just over a decade ago, we have seen an increase in its use as a payment product. Notwithstanding the benefits derived from the use of virtual assets, without established regulations and supervision, gives rise to their misuse due to the nature of due to their nature and their speed and reach. So even with virtual assets, there needs to be some form of regulation, Mr. Speaker. And that is what this bill seeks to do. The bill seeks to regulate the whole virtual asset business and it's part of the, it is part of the requirements from the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and it's what is called regional legislation in that each island has passed the virtual asset, uh, virtual asset bill, Mr. Speaker. So St. Lucia was late in doing it and St. Lucia is joining because we are in a Eastern, we are in a union and we have to follow the dictates of the union. So Mr. Speaker, this bill seeks to license companies or individuals who are part of the virtual asset business, Mr. Speaker. Any such person, Mr. Speaker, who immediately before the commencement of this act was offering or operating a virtual asset business may continue to operate that virtual asset for 60 days from the date of commencement. However, within 14 days, and that is where the change comes, within 30 days, within 40 days, Mr. Speaker, of the commencement of this act, an application for a license on the section five of this act must be made. So you must apply for a license on the section five of this act if you are in the virtual asset business. On the section five of the act, Mr. Speaker, you must, you must apply for a license. And if you read section five, you will see that it says that application for license, a person may make an application for license of authority to operate a virtual asset business. And in the time frame for that, Mr. Speaker, is 30 days on the section, on the clause, on the clause 12.1, the requirement for license, or clause 30. Cost 14. Yeah, on the cost 40, Mr. Speaker, you must apply 30 days for the license if you're in the business already. On the cost 14 of the Act, Mr. Speaker. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Mr. Speaker, this bill also makes reference in Section 11 to a person with a registered office outside of St. Lucia, appointed and having at all times in place a person who is an ordinary resident in St. Lucia to be his principal represent representative, bringing someone for the daily management of the place of business, among others. So, Mr. Speaker, we're trying to avoid only somebody having just a, 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 a plaque and say it's an office. If you're in a virtual asset business, you must have somebody working in your office, a resident working in the office, even though your office, even though you're operating from outside. The resident, you must have a resident person in the office so they, they can answer all the queries, etc., Mr. Speaker. Section 12, Mr. Speaker, rep, that a license shall place a licensee, that's a body for virtual, a virtual asset business, shall place in escrow with a registered trust company or if an entity or person whose business is the provision of trust or custodial services assets to discharge financial obligations to clients or licensee and such assets must be equivalent to a minimum of 15% of the total value of client funds held by a licensee. That's an amendment, Mr. Speaker, which we are going to propose in section in section so Mr. Speaker, you must have an S you must have fifteen percent of the total value of client funds in an escrow account if you have that kind of business. That means you you not you not you you must have the person who is investing, the person who is investing in your asset business must be assured that you have at least fifteen percent in an escrow that they can use, that they can they can claim if anything goes wrong in Mr. Speaker. That's in section twelve. Mr. Speaker, in section 13, to avoid money laundering, the person who is, who is in that business must comply with the requirements of the Money Laundering Prevention Act, Cap 12.2 not of St. Lucia. So that anybody who is in that business must comply with all the requirements of the Money Laundering, the M money laundering Prevention Act, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, in summary, this bill is seeks to modernize the financial environment in which we operate. We are operating in an environment of virtual assets. We are operating in an environment of Bitcoin, Bitcoin, an environment of, in, in a blockchain environment where we have fast moving assets, people doing, doing business, e-commerce, doing business on, on the internet. So there must be some level of, of control and there must be some level of scrutiny. And in St. Lucia, the FSRA is the body charged to do that scrutiny, perform that scrutiny, but on the, under the supervision of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank. Mr. Speaker, this is to modernize the financial space in which we exist, to modernize the environment in which we exist, to, to create new means of new opportunities for business people. And, and I know there are many young people who are interested in the virtual asset business. So this bill, what it seeks to do is it seeks to create an enabling en environment for that business to operate, but the, the necessary control and necessary regulations so it can operate within the ambit of the law and it, and it can protect people who invest in that, who invest in that, in that business, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Yes, Mr. Speaker, on the section, section four, section four three, Mr. Speaker, if a person continues to operate a virtual asset business, the person shall within seven days of the commencement of this act make an application for license under section five. So, Mr. Speaker, if you're already in the business, when this act is passed in this parliament, within seven days you must begin the application process so you can get your business registered as a virtual asset business. Mr. Speaker, as I said, this is, again, modernizing the financial space, creating more opportunity, but doing it in a regulated fashion and doing it a fashion that, that is accountable so we can protect the assets of the people who, in, who invest in that kind of business, Mr. Speaker. I ask honorable members for the support.